Welcome to Light for Darkness. Who is Michael the Archangel? Part 3. In Part 3, we are going to look at what possibly transpired between Lucifer and Michael while using scripture, and we are going to discuss why this is relevant to us today. In Daniel 10.21, Michael was called a prince. The word prince is taken from the Hebrew word archaeagos and means originator, person who creates or initiates something, author, founder, and leader. This definition gives us insight into Michael's role. Let's look at John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Now let's look at Psalms 8, 30 through 31. Then I was beside him as a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and having my delight in the sons of men. Let's take some time to really look at what this verse is saying. Jesus was a master workman, and he was the delight of God. But his delight was in the sons of men. Now let's turn our attention back to John 1, 1 through 3. Let's look at the Greek definition of the word, word here. Something said, a computation, a cause, and it is even used with concerning doctrine. God was the cause of all creation. But Jesus was his master workman. Let's go through the verse again with our in context definitions. In the beginning was the originator, and the originator was with God, and the cause was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, the originator. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. God is the cause of creation, but God established. Jesus, known as Michael, as the master workman, as the creator. He was the originator, as this is the definition of prince in Daniel 10.21. A title that put him at the head of heaven and earth, established there by God as the creator of man, and his delight was in men. Michael was the author of all life, according to John 1, 1 through 3 and Lucifer was in charge of building a holy city and a throne for Michael. Lucifer became envious of Michael, and as his envy grew, it became hatred for Michael, and his hatred caused him to reject Michael's authority. But he not only rejected Michael's authority, he despised Michael's authority. This led him to eventually rebel against Michael in heaven and be cast down to earth, where Lucifer would go after the very men that Michael delighted in. Before the birth of Messiah, Lucifer had already fallen. He had already allowed his pride to pollute his mind and body. He already lost his place among the angels in the building of the holy city and the throne that he so coveted. It was now out of his hands, and he was cast out of heaven. Lucifer had gone to war with Michael and his angels, Michael, your prince, and he had lost. But Lucifer did gain a following. So Lucifer devised a new plan. Lucifer believed, and believes, he can defeat Michael and gain access back to heaven, thus gain the throne and the loyalty of all the angels instead of Michael, if he proves that he is stronger that he is the one that should be king. This is why Lucifer chose to deceive Adam and Eve. He not only is attempting to create and build an army against Michael, he is also attempting to steal away from Michael the creatures he delights in, according to Proverbs 8.31. Jesus tells us in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And the context of this verse is the sheep, the people of God. Lucifer's second plan includes the stealing of man from Michael.
But because Michael loves us so much, he made a plan for reconciliation that is still in process. For reconciliation cannot be achieved until we can once again commune with him in the garden in the same manner as Adam and Eve. Jesus was with God from the beginning. It was him who created the earth and all of us. Yet the name Jesus was not given him until Gabriel visited Mary. This is why the book of Revelation says Michael and his angels. Michael is the commander of the Lord's army. This has been established in Revelation. And Jesus being the commander of the Lord's army was established in Joshua 5-6 because Joshua accepted worship. And Joshua was told that he was standing on holy ground. Michael is commander of the Lord's army. Michael is Jesus. And Michael was stated as being Daniel's prince, making him our prince, our author. He wrote us into being. He is our originator and our founder. He created the earth, thus he founded it and us. And he is our leader. From the beginning, Jesus, Michael, was the commander, the prince. Lucifer was created to be magnificent. He was the seal of perfection and a musical being. He was given the ability needed to be in charge of the most amazing and important building project in all the heavenly realm and anointed for the position. Lucifer was an angel with authority, but limited authority. Over time, his role and title wasn't enough. Being in charge of building and designing the holy city and the throne for Michael was not enough. Eventually, Lucifer said in his heart that it should be him instead of Michael. And as that thought perseverated, Lucifer's hate for Michael grew. He hated taking orders from Michael. He felt entitled to Michael's authority and leadership, so he used his own authority and leadership to lead the other angels into a rebellion against God and Michael and decide to take the holy city by siege. He would seat himself on the throne and take ownership and authority away from Michael by force. Then he would be the one that the music was made for and that all the others bowed before. He would be king. However, this initial plan failed, but Lucifer is still fighting. Lucifer still believes that the throne and the city are rightfully his because of what he believes is his superior intelligence, beauty, and skill. Lucifer has forgotten that he was endowed and anointed by God and is now out to make himself superior in authority to sit upon the throne and be master of all. Lucifer only managed to convince a third of the angels to follow him according to Revelation 12.4. Lucifer needs a bigger army, and what better way to get back at Michael than to steal those whom Michael loves and turn them against Michael. Lucifer went into the garden of God and deceived Adam and Eve, and to this day is working to turn the inhabitants of earth into his army against God and Michael, because he believes he can defeat God and is entitled to Michael's authority. Michael lovingly created the earth and man. This makes him a willing servant, willing to be the commander of the Lord's army, willing to come to serve man, and willing to die for the sake of mankind out of love and understanding that humankind was no match for Lucifer. I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning, Luke 10, 18. Thus, Michael subjected himself not only to be the sacrifice for sins, but willingly subjected himself to Lucifer, who hated and despised him. And in so doing, he paved the way for mankind to be able to enter the holy city at the appointed time. In contrast, Lucifer is a being less powerful, willing to deceive, willing to lie, a thief, and a power-hungry being who traded all that heaven and God had to offer for a temporary gain of power over this world. 
Lucifer was cast out of heaven when he tried to deceive and steal the throne from Michael. Lucifer was successful at enticing Adam and Eve to sin, thus becoming the ruler of this world when man chose to accept his authority over God's, but only for a time. Michael has paved a way for our redemption by coming down as Jesus and dying, cleansing our sins and taking away our iniquity, giving us his righteousness, thus handing to us through his spirit power and authority over Satan and his angels, according to Luke 10.19. Lucifer has been granted his desire, not by God or Michael, but by man. Lucifer is now Satan, and he is the prince and master of this fallen world, but only for a time. Lucifer's time of rulership is short, and the day is coming when his time will end and he will die. All who knew you among the people are astonished at you, you have become terrified, and you shall be no more forever. Ezekiel 28:19. In the meantime, Lucifer is going to continue to do all he can to defeat Michael. He is desperate and is waging war in desperate attempts to gain his life and the throne of Michael. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6.12 We fight the fight under the same command of the same Saba as Joshua. Our commander is Jesus, and he will lead us to victory, and this time it will be for eternity. And the holy mountain, the city of Zion, which means permanent capital, will ascend from heaven with Michael, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, upon his throne. Revelation 2011, and he will be our one and only true king, ruler, and lord, and we shall be his people. Revelation 21.3 Until then, beware, Christians, for the devil, the adversary, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 2 Peter 5.8 And Satan will disguise himself as an angel of light, and all his servants are able to transform into angels of light. 2 Corinthians 11, 14-15 To deceive and lead astray the people of God, because he hates you as much as he hates Michael, because in his mind, if all the earth would succumb to him and follow him, then he would survive. But as long as there is a remnant, there is proof that he will never succeed, and we are warned that his wrath will be aimed at the remnant in the final days. Revelation 12, 17 Stand strong! For the appointed time of trouble is coming, and the battle is increasing in severity, because the angry dragon, who is wroth with the remnant of God, is getting even more desperate, and he will stop at nothing to destroy all those who follow the one and only true Prince Michael, who will be our King on earth, Jesus our Lord, whom we excitedly wait for to come back as King and tabernacle with us for eternity. Thank you for watching Who is Michael the Archangel? We hope this series has enriched you and your lives and your relationship with Jesus as much as studying it has for us. Blessings.